Here is Dr. Jawanza Kanjufu with his penetrating presentation of Countering the Conspiracy to Destroy Black Boys. There's no topic that concerns me more than the one on the conspiracy to destroy black boys. And the reason is when our little boys are in preschool and primary grades, they're very innocent and very enthusiastic about learning. But something happens to that, and we need to find out what that is. My younger son is on the cover of this particular book, and I would like for him to grow up to be a man. Like many of you already told me, that you have sons and male students as well. Now, there's two parts of the conspiracy, volume one, and this is volume two. In volume one, we raise four questions. First question is, when did the conspiracy start? Who is against black boys? Why is there a conspiracy against them? And what exactly is the conspiracy? That's in volume one. In volume two, we look at the relationships between mothers and their sons. That must be studied. We also must look at female teachers and black male students. That must also be studied. We must look at some case studies. In other words, many of us are doing a very good job developing black boys to be men. What is it that some of us are doing that others are not doing? And then last but not least, a program called the Rites of Passage in the Manhood. See, it used to be we knew when black boys became men. But now many of us don't know when we're men. It's how much reefer we smoke, how much wine we drink, how many babies we make. Until black men spell it out to black boys what it means to be a man, this conspiracy will continue. But let's go back to volume one. When did it start? And as we begin to look at that, I want to also share with you why we call it a conspiracy to destroy black boys. You see, contrary to belief at birth, there are more black boys born in the world than there are girls. It's close, but it's 1.03 black boys born in the world to 1.0 black girls. Hear me clearly. At birth, black boys outnumber black girls 1.03 to 1.0. A brief 18 years later, it is now 1.0 available, and that's the key word, available black men, to 1.8 available black women. Almost two adult women for every one adult man. Now, the only question that should be going through your minds right now is what happened. We keep raising the wrong question. We keep asking, why do black men hang on corners? Why do black men lack direction? Well, if you ask this question, you're asking the question 18 to 30 years too late. It is not a conspiracy to destroy black men. It's a conspiracy to destroy black boys. If you destroy them as a boy, he'll never become a man. Now I can look around the room and tell you know where are they. If they are not available to black women, where are they? Call the roll. In jail, in jail there are 329,000 brothers in prison right now. One of every four brothers will go to prison. Where else? Or, or death, death. There's numerous ways that we die. There's homicide, suicide, drugs, war, high blood pressure, and the leading killer among black men, lung cancer. Our love for cigarettes, especially cool. Smoke them all day long, die the exact same way. Cool. Where else? We have prison, death. What else to make us unavailable to black women? Yes, homosexuality. Uh, as you said earlier, one of every nine men in this country are homosexual. Where else? Yes? Hospitalized, institutionalized. Okay, so institutionalization, and there's not only in terms of hospitals, but also mental institutions, and of course, when they get released, many times being homeless. There's still one other large popular area. Thimby? They marry white women. Okay, interracial marriages. Now I want to pause there for a moment, because you would think if anybody is going to marry outside the race, it would be black women. You got two black women for every one black man. But as Thimmy pointed out, it's exactly the opposite. There are 164,000 interracial marriages, of which 116,000 are brothers. That means 48,000 sisters. It's almost a two to one ratio of black men to black women marrying outside the race. But remember, as you said in an earlier workshop, if the definition of beauty is light skin, long hair and blue eyes, why stop with Renee, the light-skinned sister? Why not get you the real thing? There's some serious problems here. And then black men tell me, I can't find a black woman to understand me. You mean out of 20 million black women, you can't find one to understand you? You don't need a white woman, you need a psychiatrist. <laughs> but that's another workshop on relationships. But I just want to share with you, we got some very serious problems. But to tease this audience, black women are tired of being by themselves. And in the earlier issue of Essence magazine, the article said, guess who's coming to dinner now? Black women are tired of being by themselves. In other words, brothers, you can't have it both ways. You can't have two black women to choose from and still marry a white woman. You can't have two black women.